the motionless generator of Graham Gunderson. Graham Gunderson's solid state electric generator is shown in U.S. Patent Application 2060163971A1 of July 27, 2006. The details are as follows Abstract A solid state electrical generator, including at least one permanent magnet, magnetically coupled to a ferromagnetic core provided with at least one hole penetrating its volume, the hole, S, and magnet, S, being placed so that the hole, S, intercept flux from the permanent magnet, S, coupled into the ferromagnetic core. A first wire coil is wound around the ferromagnetic core for the purpose of moving the coupled permanent magnet flux within the ferromagnetic core. A second wire is routed through the hole, S, penetrating the volume of the ferromagnetic core, for the purpose of intercepting this moving magnetic flux, thereby inducing an output electromotive force. Changing voltage applied to the first wire coil causes coupled permanent magnet flux to move within the core relative to the hole, S, penetrating the core volume, thus inducing electromotive force along wire, S, passing through the hole, S, in the ferromagnetic core. The mechanical action of an electrical generator is therefore synthesized without the use of moving parts. Background this invention relates to a method and device for generating electrical power using solid-state means. It has long been known that moving a magnetic field across a wire will generate an electromotive force, EMF, or voltage, along the wire. When this wire is connected in a closed electrical circuit, an electric current, capable of performing work, is driven through this closed circuit by the induced electromotive force. It has also long been known that this resulting electric current causes the closed circuit to become encircled with a secondary, induced magnetic field, whose polarity opposes the primary magnetic field which first induced the EMF. This magnetic opposition creates mutual repulsion as a moving magnet approaches such a closed circuit, and a mutual attraction as that moving magnet moves away from the closed circuit. Both these actions tend to slow or cause drag on the progress of the moving magnet causing the electric generator to act as a magnetic brake, whose effect is in direct proportion to the amount of electric current produced. Historically, gas engines, hydroelectric dams and steam-fed turbines have been used to overcome this magnetic braking action which occurs within mechanical generators. A large amount of mechanical power is required to produce a large amount of electrical power, since the magnetic braking is generally proportional to the amount of electrical power being generated. There has long been felt the need for a generator which reduces or eliminates the well-known magnetic braking interaction, while nevertheless generating useful electric power. The need for convenient, economical and powerful sources of renewable energy remains urgent. When the magnetic fields within a generator are caused to move and interact by means other than applied mechanical force, Electric power can be supplied without the necessity of consuming limited natural resources, thus with far greater economy. Summary of the invention It has long been known that the source of the magnetism within a permanent magnet is a spinning electric current within ferromagnetic atoms of certain elements, persisting indefinitely in accord with well-defined quantum rules. This atomic current encircles every atom, thereby causing each atom to emit a magnetic field, as a miniature electromagnet. This atomic current does not exist in magnets alone. It also exists in ordinary metallic iron, and in any element or metallic alloy which can be magnetized, that is, any material which exhibits ferromagnetism. All ferromagnetic atoms and magnetic metals contain such quantum atomic electromagnets. In specific ferromagnetic materials, the orientation axis of each atomic electromagnet is flexible. The orientation of magnetic flux both internal and external to the material, pivots easily. Such materials are referred to as magnetically soft, due to this magnetic flexibility. Permanent magnet materials are magnetically hard. The orientation axis of each is fixed in place within a rigid crystal structure. The total magnetic field produced by these atoms cannot easily move. This constraint aligns the field of ordinary magnets permanently, hence the name permanent. 
the axis of circular current flow in one ferromagnetic atom can direct the axis of magnetism within another ferromagnetic atom, through a process known as spin exchange. This gives a soft magnetic material, like raw iron, the useful ability to aim, focus and redirect the magnetic field emitted from a magnetically hard permanent magnet. In the present invention, a permanent magnet's rigid field is sent into a magnetically flexible soft magnetic material. The permanent magnet's apparent location, observed from points within the magnetically soft material, will effectively move, vibrate, and appear to shift position when the magnetization of the soft magnetic material is modulated by ancillary means, much like the sun, viewed while underwater, appears to move when the water is agitated. By this mechanism, the motion required for generation of electricity can be synthesized within a soft magnetic material, without requiring physical movement or an applied mechanical force. The present invention synthesizes the virtual motion of magnets and their magnetic fields, without the need for mechanical action or moving parts, to produce the electrical generator described here. The present invention describes an electrical generator where magnetic braking known as expressions of Lenz's law, do not oppose the means by which the magnetic field energy is caused to move. The synthesized magnetic motion is produced without either mechanical or electrical resistance. This synthesized magnetic motion is aided by forces generated in accordance with Lenz's law, in order to produce acceleration of the synthesized magnetic motion, instead of physical magnetic braking common to mechanically actuated electrical generators. Because of this novel magnetic interaction, the solid-state static generator of the present invention is a robust generator, requiring only a small electric force of operate. Brief Description of the Drawings the appended drawings illustrate only typical embodiments of this invention and are therefore not to be considered limiting of its scope, as the invention encompasses other equally effective embodiments. Fig 1 is an exploded view of the generator of this invention. Fig 2 is a cross-sectional elevation of the generator of this invention. Fig 3 is a schematic diagram of the magnetic action occurring within the generator of Fig 1 and Fig 2. Fig 4 is a circuit diagram illustrating one method of operating the electrical generator of this invention. Detailed description of the invention. Fig 1 depicts a partially exploded view of an embodiment of an electrical generator of this invention. The part numbers also apply in Fig 2 and Fig 3. Numeral 1 represents a permanent magnet with its north pole pointing inward towards the soft ferromagnetic core of the device. Similarly, numeral 2 indicates permanent magnets, preferably of the same size, shape and composition, with their south poles aimed inward towards the opposite side, or opposite surface of the device. The letters S and N denote these magnetic poles in the drawings. Other magnetic polarities and configurations may be used with success, the pattern shown merely illustrates one efficient method of adding magnets to the core. The magnets may be formed of any polarized magnetic material. In order of descending effectiveness, the most desirable permanent magnet materials are neodymium iron boron, nib, samarium cobalt, aluminum nickel cobalt alloy, or ceramic strontium barium or lead ferrite. A primary factor determining permanent magnet material composition is the magnetic flux strength of the particular material type. In an embodiment of the invention, these magnets may also be substituted with one or more electromagnets producing the required magnetic flux. In another embodiment of the invention, a superimposed DC current bias can be applied to the output wire to generate the required magnetic flux, replacing or augmenting the permanent magnets. Numeral 3 indicates the magnetic core. This core is a critical component of the generator. The core determines the output power capacity, the optimum magnet type, the electrical impedance and the operating frequency range. The core may be any shape, composed of any ferromagnetic material, formed by any process, sintering, casting, adhesive bonding, tape winding, etc. A wide range of shapes, materials and processes is known in the art of making magnetic cores. Effective common materials include amorphous metal alloys, such as sold under the Metglas trademark by Metglas Incorporated, Conway, SC, 
nanocrystalline alloys, manganese and zinc ferrites as well as ferrites of any suitable element including any combination of magnetically hard and soft ferrites, powdered metals and ferromagnetic alloys, laminations of cobalt and slash or iron and silicon iron electrical steel. This invention successfully utilizes any ferromagnetic material, while functioning as claimed. In an embodiment of the invention, and for the purpose of illustration, a circular toroid core is illustrated. In an embodiment of the invention, the composition may be bonded iron powder, commonly available from many manufacturers. Regardless of core type, the core is prepared with holes, through which, wires may pass. The holes are drilled or formed to penetrate the core's ferromagnetic volume. The toroidal core 3 shown, includes radial holes pointing towards a common center. If, for example, stiff wire rods were to be inserted through each of these holes, these rods would meet at the center point of the core, producing an appearance similar to a wheel with spokes. If a square or rectangular core, not illustrated, is used, then these holes are preferably oriented parallel to the core's flat sides, causing stiff rods passed through the holes to form a square grid pattern, as the rods cross each other in the interior window area framed by the core. While in other embodiments of the invention, these holes may take any possible orientation or patterns of orientation, a simple row of radial holes is illustrated as one example. Numeral 4 depicts a wire, or bundle of wires which pick up and carry the output power of the generator. Typically, this wire is composed of insulated copper, though other materials such as aluminium, iron, dielectric material, polymers and semiconducting materials may be substituted. It may be seen in Fig 1 and Fig 2, that wire 4 passes alternately through neighboring holes formed in core 3. The path taken by wire 4 undulates as it passes in opposite direction through each adjacent hole. If an even number of holes is used, the wire will emerge on the same side of the core on which it first entered. Once all the holes are filled, the resulting pair of trailing leads may be twisted together or similarly terminated, forming the output terminals of the generator shown at numeral 5. Output wire 4, may also make multiple passes through each hole in the core. Though the winding pattern is not necessarily undulatory, this basic form is shown as an example. Many effective connection styles exist. This illustration shows the most simple. Numeral 6 in Fig 1, Fig 2 and Fig 3, points to a partial illustration of the input winding, or inductive coil used to shift the fields of the permanent magnets, within the core. Typically, this wire coil encircles the core, wrapping around it. For the toroidal core shown, input coil 6 resembles the outer windings of a typical toroidal inductor, a common electrical component. For the sake of clarity, only a few turns of coil 6 are shown in each of Fig 1, Fig 2 and Fig 3. In practice, this coil may cover the entire core, or specific sections of the core, including, or not including the magnets. Fig 2 shows the same electrical generator of Fig 1, looking transparently down through it from above, so that the relative positions of the core holes, shown as dotted lines, the path of the output wire 4, and the position of the magnets, white hatched areas for magnets under the core and green hatched areas for magnets above the core, are made clear. The few representative turns of the input coil 6 are shown in red in Fig 2. The generator illustrated, uses a core with 8 radially drilled holes. The spacing between these holes is equal. As shown, each hole is displaced by 45 degrees from each of its adjoining holes. The centers of all of the holes lie on a common plane lying halfway down the vertical thickness of the core. Cores of any shape or size may have as few as two or as many as hundreds of holes and a similar number of magnets. Other variations exist, such as generators with multiple rows of holes, zigzag and diagonal patterns, or output wire for molded directly into the core material. In any case, the basic magnetic interaction shown in Fig 3 occurs for each hole in the core as described below. Fig 3 shows the same design, viewed from the side. The curvature of the core is shown flattened on the page for the purpose of illustration. The magnets are represented schematically, 
protruding from the top and bottom of the core, and including arrows indicating the direction of magnetic flux, the arrowheads point to the magnet's north pole. In practice, the free, unattached polar ends of the generator's magnets may be left as is in open air, or they may be provided with a common ferromagnetic path linking the unattached north and south poles together as a magnetic ground. The common return path is typically made of steel, iron or similar material, taking the form of a ferrous enclosure housing the device. It may serve the additional purpose of a protecting chassis. The magnetic return may also be another ferromagnetic core of a similar electric generator stacked on top of the illustrated generator. There can be a stack of generators, sharing common magnets between the generator cores. Any such additions are without direct bearing on the functional principle of the generator itself, and have therefore been omitted from these illustrations. Two example flux diagrams are shown in Fig 3. Each example is shown in a space between schematically depicted partial input coil 6. A positive or negative polarity marker indicates the direction of input current, applied through the input coil. This applied current produces modulating magnetic flux, which is used to synthesize apparent motion of the permanent magnets, and is shown as a double-tailed horizontal arrow, A, along the core 3. Each example shows this double-tailed arrow, A, pointing to the right or to the left, depending on the polarity of the applied current. In either case, vertical flux entering the core, B, 3, from the external permanent magnets, 1, 2, is swept along within the core, in the direction of the double-tailed arrow, A, representing the magnetic flux of the input coil. These curved arrows, B, in the space between the magnets and the holes, can be seen to shift or bend, A, B, as if they were streams or jets of air subject to a changing wind. The resulting sweeping motion of the fields of the permanent magnets, causes their flux, B, to brush back and forth over the holes and wire for which passes through these holes. Just as in a mechanical generator, when the magnetic flux brushes or cuts sideways across a conductor in this way, voltage is induced in the conductor. If an electrical load is connected across the ends of this wire conductor, numeral 5 in Fig 1 and Fig 2, a current flows through the load via this closed circuit, delivering electrical power able to perform work. Input of an alternating current across the input coil 6, generates an alternating magnetic field, a, causing the fields of permanent magnets 1 and 2 to shift, b, within the core 3, inducing electrical power through a load, attached to terminals 5, as if the fixed magnets, 1, 2, themselves were physically moving. However, no mechanical motion is present. In a mechanical generator, induced current powering an electrical load, returns through output wire 4, creating a secondary induced magnetic field, exerting forces which substantially oppose the original magnetic field inducing the original EMF. Since load currents induce their own, secondary magnetic fields opposing the original act of induction in this way, the source of the original induction requires additional energy to restore itself and continue generating electricity. In mechanical generators, the energy inducing motion of the generator's magnetic fields is being physically actuated, requiring a strong prime mover, such as a steam turbine, to restore the EMF generating magnetic fields motion against the braking effect of the output induced magnetic fields, the induced field C and the inducing field B, destructively in mutual opposition, which must ultimately be overcome by physical force, which is commonly produced by the consumption of other energy. Resources The electrical generator of the present invention is not actuated by mechanical force. It makes use of the induced secondary magnetic field in such a way as to not cause opposition, but instead, addition and resulting acceleration of magnetic field motion. Because the present invention is not mechanically actuated, and because the magnetic fields do not act to destroy one another in mutual opposition, the present invention does not require the consumption of natural resources in order to generate electricity. The present generator's induced magnetic field, resulting from electrical current flowing through the load and returning through output wire 4, is that of a closed loop encircling each hole in the core. 
the induced magnetic fields create magnetic flux in the form of closed loops within the ferromagnetic core. The magnetic field encircles each hole in the core which carries output wire 4. This is similar to the threads of a screw encircling the shaft of the screw. Within this generator, the magnetic field from output wire 4 immediately encircles each hole formed in the core, C. Since wire may forth take an opposing direction through each neighboring hole, the direction of the resulting magnetic field will likewise be opposite. The direction of arrows, B, and, C, are, at each hole, opposing, headed in opposite directions, since, B, is the inducing flux and, C, is the induced flux, each opposing one another while generating electricity. However, this magnetic opposition is effectively directed against the permanent magnets which are injecting their flux into the core, but not the source of the alternating magnetic input field 6. In the present solid state generator, induced output flux, 4, C, is directed to oppose the permanent magnets, 1, 2, not the input flux source, 6, A, which is synthesizing the virtual motion of those magnets, 1, 2, by its magnetizing action on core 3. The present generator employs magnets as the source of motive pressure driving the generator, since they are the entity being opposed or pushed against by the opposing reaction induced by output current which is powering a load. Experiments show that high-quality permanent magnets can be magnetically pushed against in this way for very long periods of time, before becoming demagnetized or spent. Fig 3 illustrates inducing representative flux arrows, B, directed oppositely against induced representative flux, C. In materials typically used to form core 3, fields flowing in mutually opposite directions tend to cancel each other, just as positive and negative numbers of equal magnitude sum to zero. On the remaining side of each hole, opposite the permanent magnet, no mutual opposition takes place. Induced flux, C, caused by the generator load current remains present, however, inducing flux from the permanent magnets, B, is not present since no magnet is present, on this side, to provide the necessary flux. This leaves the induced flux, C, encircling the hole, as well as input flux, A, from the input coil 6, continuing its path along the core, on either side of each hole. On the side of each hole in the core where a magnet is present, action, B, and reaction, C, magnetic flux substantially cancel each other, being directed in opposite directions within the core. On the other side of each hole, where no magnet is present, input flux, A, and reaction flux, C, share a common direction. Magnetic flux adds together in these zones, where induced magnetic flux, C, aids the input flux, A. This is the reverse of typical generator action, where induced flux, C, is typically opposing the input flux originating the induction. Since the magnetic interaction is a combination of magnetic flux opposition and magnetic flux acceleration, there is no longer an overall magnetic breaking or total opposition effect. The breaking and opposition is counterbalanced by a simultaneous magnetic acceleration within the core. Since mechanical motion is absent, the equivalent electrical effect ranges from idling, or absence of opposition, to a strengthening and overall acceleration of the electrical input signal, within coil 6. Proper selection of the permanent magnet, 1, 2, material and flux density, core 3 material magnetic characteristics, core hole pattern and spacing, and output medium connection technique, create embodiments where the present generator will display an absence of electrical loading at the input and slash or an overall amplification of the input signal. This ultimately causes less input energy to be required in order to work the generator. Therefore, as increasing amounts of energy are withdrawn from the generator as output power performing useful work, decreasing amounts of energy are generally required to operate it. This process continues, working against the permanent magnets, 1, 2, until they are demagnetized. In an embodiment of this invention, Fig 4 illustrates a typical operating circuit employing the generator of this invention. A square wave input signal from a transistor switching circuit, 
is applied at the input terminals, S, to the primary, A, of a step-down transformer 11. The secondary winding, B, of the input transformer may be a single turn, in series with a capacitor 12 and the generator 13 input coil, C, forming a series resonance circuit. The frequency of the applied square wave, S, must either match, or be an integral subharmonic of the resonant frequency of this three-element transformer capacitor inductor input circuit. Generator 13 output winding, D, is connected to resistive load L through switch 14. When switch 14 is closed, generated power is dissipated at L, which is any resistive load, for example, an incandescent lamp or resistive heater. Once input resonance is achieved, and the square wave frequency applied at S is such that the combined reactive impedance of total inductance, B plus C, is equal in magnitude to the opposing reactive impedance of capacitance 12, the electrical phases of current through, and voltage across, generator 13 input coil, C, will flow 90 degrees apart in resonant quadrature. Power drawn from the square wave input energy source applied to S will now be at a minimum. In this condition, the resonant energy present at the generator input may be measured by connecting a voltage probe across the test points, V, situated across the generator input coil, together with a current probe around point, I, situated in series with the generator input coil, C. The instantaneous vector product of these two measurements indicates the energy circulating at the generator's input, ultimately shifting the permanent magnets fields in order to create useful induction. This situation persists until the magnets are no longer magnetized. It will be apparent to those skilled in the art that a square, or other, wave may be applied directly to the generator input terminals, C, without the use of other components. While this remains effective, advantageous regenerating effects may not be realized to their fullest extent with such direct excitation. Use of a resonant circuit, particularly with inclusion of a capacitor 12 as suggested, facilitates recirculation of energy within the input circuit, generally producing efficient excitation and a reduction of the required input power as loads are applied.